The YouTube algorithm hates you because you're too authentic. You don't rely on AI for your scripts and you don't copy other people's ideas for content because everything you make is original. And yeah, sometimes those are the thoughts I get as a film director on this platform. I think we all have videos that we think should perform better on the YouTube algorithm. Videos that we put hours into, a lot of effort into, scripting, writing, performing. I also want to say that none of my videos have been scripted using AI. Every shot is mine, except for the excerpts from certain films and things like that. So I thought I'd start a little series where I go over some of my early videos, uh, ones from about four months ago when I started my YouTube channel, the ones that I think really deserved a few more views but they didn't get those views. And maybe these videos can actually help revive the earlier episodes that I still think need a little bit of love. Why did this one here only get 319 views, for example? How I wrote a screenplay, brackets, cinematic life. The world is our stage and we are the directors of our everyday lives. As you can see, my movies deal with the trauma of the everyday human experience. I was once a prolific film director. I truly believe that this world is a stage. There is beauty if you look towards the sun. There is melodrama if you're fishing in the alleyway looking for a story. And there is a epic poem on the sutures of your broken heart. I really like that opening shot. To be honest, I look at that opening shot and I'm like, I love that that was shot on the DJ out of my pocket three because those are the kind of shots I'm used to getting on like these bigger, more cinema ready cameras, right? But this tiny vlogging camera got that shot. That was like very early on in my usage of the DJ where I was like, oh my gosh, this camera can actually do this. Like, that's pretty amazing that I walked in, put it on a table and got that shot just. So I think the opening is pretty good. It's um maybe not, attention grabbing enough as some of my other videos where I open with a bold statement that's like very You're not a real filmmaker filming on that DJ Osmo Pocket 3, you loser. And are there film people out there that think this way? Kind of, you know, a punch in the face almost, but yeah, no, for, for the most part, I think it's quite a sophisticated, nice opening. So yeah. Can I do a shot of me pretending to order my coffee again? Sorry, I don't wanna go first actually. <laughs> Can I have a batch brew? Yeah, sure, that's a happy <laughs> There's also a breaking of the fourth wall that I quite like, like the whole pretending to my order my coffee again. I quite like that little touch. It kind of separates me from other people um, who do this kind of vlogging. Uh, but maybe uh, the YouTube audience doesn't really dig that whole kind of deconstruction or self-awareness about the vlogging. So maybe people already had tuned out by then, I'm not sure. The world is our stage and we are the directors of our everyday lives. Technically, like I did frame up at the start, we are, this is a stage, you know, I really, I believe the world is a stage. And for me, vlogging clearly is an extension of that the same way my writing is, the same way my filmmaking is. It's all an extension of that uh, reality that you're putting forward through the screen. So yeah, I, I like that little touch, but maybe, um, yeah, that might not have worked for some people. And how do those uh, creative pursuits work? I mean, practically in a day, I mean, we all have responsibilities. I've been searching for pockets of time. I write at the coffee store. I write when I'm walking. I write at the park. Quite possibly to my detriment on the platform. I think by not having like five specific rules here, uh, on writing or something along those lines. For me, I wanted to focus on a realistic way that someone who works a job or has other commitments in life, like family and kids, actually goes about being creative. So I take a more inspirational route. There's always time to ride on the tram. My whole last video was about that. Sometimes inspiration strikes at a friend's house and you know, you just gotta pull the laptop out. Simon, old friend, and uh, yeah, sometimes you just need to sit down and do a bit of writing when you randomly get ideas too. It's got like this autofocus function and then like even if you just like turn around, boom, like, there you go, see, that's kinda. Uh, Simon was in one of my films a few years ago, one of the uh, old friends, this uh, beautiful city apartment here. Yes, there yeah, we go, oh nice. yeah. I also wanted to introduce an actor. Simon is someone I've worked with and has been great. And I think because I'm a filmmaker who works with actors, I thought that that would be an interesting little segue, but also to show the lifestyle part of things because filmmakers uh, have a lifestyle in these city apartments and all that 
kind of um, cinematic flourish is something you'd see in 90s independent film. I think this was more inspired by those kind of films, those indie films where a character is bouncing around the city and meeting characters and all these things are happening, going to cafes and all that was part of my version of a cinematic vlog. Not everything you write will be a masterpiece, that's for sure. But if you do it every single day, you might stumble upon something special. I once wrote a feature film screenplay right here in this arcade. I sat right here for a few hours every day writing between playing DDR fasting, drinking black coffee, I'd elevate my heart rate and then disassociate and write. And also a point of difference was my whole approach. I mean, that era of my life where I was writing screenplays like crazy, I literally wrote a 150 page screenplay in like a week during that time. I was very elevated. Uh, I would do a lot of things to just be kind of manic at the time. And this was me trying to capture that part of my lifestyle or life style at the time in my life. Yeah, sitting in a arcade and just writing non-stop and writing non-stop also playing dance dance revolution trying to get my heart rate jacked because that way i would be able to well yeah effectively just be manic because mania is what created a lot of those emotions from my early works i was drinking like four long blacks a day during that time and i'm not gonna lie it was pretty <laughs> intense unfortunately that 80 page screenplay was never made and i had a breakdown shortly after but who knows, maybe one day I will finish this script. Maybe I will direct that movie. The good thing is, on my laptop, this screenplay still exists, and maybe one day I will come around to finishing it. Right now, what I'm feeling after seeing the ending here, the whole message was to just create. Like, if you have downtime, try and write. Try and write, put something out there. Put something, commit to paper, commit it to the page. But the hard thing about that is, and I even admit this during winter, that ray of sunlight just changed my mood just then and made me quite happy. But it's been cold. Winter is really hard and I actually do want to do a video about how it feels to be an artist during winter. Maybe some artists flourish, but for me it is really hard. Like, I've been struggling really hard to get things going and my editing hasn't been as consistent and I've been trying so hard, but when Melbourne hits zero degrees and your clothes will literally freeze on the balcony, <laughs> no joke. You wake up and you want to create, you want to do things, but it's just so hard. And even though I've been trying to create more and make things more consistently for you, um, but it's just been really hard for me lately and I'm, I am struggling, I'm not going to lie. My script was a high stakes existential drama set in an arcade and I utilise that environment to help me write. In your downtime, just write. It's a beautiful thing to have. There are stories everywhere if you just stand still and let the world move quickly around you. That's me spinning the camera, but yeah, get the point. So I thought I would just go over some older videos and create some content to bring some life to them because I do like the message of some of these early episodes. Like the message in this is beautiful. It's like there are stories everywhere. The world is your stage. Go out and create if that's who you are and that's what you want to do. Go out and do it. And yeah, I need to listen to my own advice because it's the thing that makes me happy. It's the thing that keeps me going. And even when I talk about it, you can, you can see I get excited about it. But why is it so hard to do? I'm not sure. It's something I might never ever really know. The discipline it takes to get up every day and do it is its own thing. And when I was going through that era, I relied a lot on being stimulated to do it. And I'm not that person now. I live a healthier lifestyle now but things have slowed down. So I'm trying to find that perfect balance, which I think every artist out there is trying to find. And sometimes I get frustrated because I just wish I could just create nonstop because that's when I'm really happy. But the sun doesn't always shine and the clouds do cover the sun sometimes. And sometimes there's a lot of beauty in that too. And so that was all off the top of the dome. And thank you. Hopefully the next episode's better. I don't know. Maybe the algorithm will push this one out. I don't know. Peace.